Hello and welcome to Content Contempt, episode 2. Today's guest is Aiden, and today we're going to be talking about burnout and some other shit. So, stay tuned. He would get Elon Musk back on and he'd say, So what's the deal with the, the blood diamonds? What's the deal with that SpaceX food? <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Where we talk about SpaceX and Joe Rogan. How many racial slurs am I allowed? Two. Okay, which two? <laughs> Say them right now. <laughs> Welcome back to Content Contempt, uh, episode two with Aiden from NTMA Productions. So, in this episode, we're going to be talking about creative burnout and trying to be consistent with your channel, which... yeah. <laughs> Seeing as I am who I am, I, I figured it'd be best if I got someone else to talk about that. I'm nothing if not consistent. I don't know how you do it, honestly. <laughs> I don't know either, dog. Like, how, know. how many times a month do you upload? Uh, it's been slower for the last couple months because of some life shit, but uh, I'd say on the average month, probably... Uh, between like six and ten times at least god damn and you know those are videos of varying length and uh quality well first uh there's two of us obviously there's me and connor uh so that kind of masks our consistency as well because we don't really work on videos together like we'll record videos but we don't like do any joint editing or anything so we'll kind of just independently push it out a lot of the times it's kind of like a situation where uh, I'll, I'll text Connor and be like, I'm uploading a video today, and he'll text me back and say, cool, me too. <laughs> it's like, hey, well, I guess it's a, I guess it's a two for day. And then also, uh, you know, it sounds kind of bad to say, but we have Drunk View, which is our, I mean, it's the series that we originally started. Like, it's pretty much the genesis of the channel, the Drunk View series. For the most part, we just went every day and saw everything because, you know, that that's just what we did, I guess. So, who are you? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm Aiden. I have a channel called NTMA Productions. I, we talk about a lot of things. We do a lot of things. We're all over the place. Uh, but uh, back to what I was saying. <laughs> the, uh, the drunk views, conceptually, they're kind of just, like, quick throwaway filler content which kind of bolsters our roster as well um and then for everything else i mean uh, I, I wish i had a better answer i mean i finish something and then i say okay well what am i gonna do the rest of the day and i'm like all right time to edit so you're saying you find this shit relaxing it's like it's fun to you yeah i mean how dare you Kind of has like the mundane hypnotic quality to it, you know, where you, you kind of just get into the vibe and stop thinking about it. I like to, I, I think this is a little unusual, but when I'm editing, I, I, I pick out the music I want in a, a certain segment when I'm, when I'm doing something more thoroughly edited. I just slap that into the video track as I'm editing and I just kind of edit along to the pace of the music, try to time my cuts around that. You'd think it would make the process more difficult, but in a way it kind of helps decide your flow for you so that you're not overthinking that aspect of it, which I think is the hardest part. The way you keep consistent is, one, you, you like doing it, for starters. Yeah, I mean, it, it's enjoyable. And two, you kind of get in your groove and you keep going. But also, yeah, yeah. And then I kind of, I mean, my editing style is far from fancy. Even even during the recording process, I usually sit down and just record whatever script I've written in one huge block without, like, cutting for takes. Like, I'll just immediately try again if I fuck up, and I'll just cut out all those things and just have it as one big block, which is unwieldy and stupid, but it allows me to keep intact my natural pace regardless of what happens. So, even some of our other series are kind of more on the, uh, less complex end, uh, with the, uh, Netflix roulette and stuff, which are fairly lightly edited. So what kind of content do you make? Vape trick compilations. No, but but really. Um, all sorts of things, dog. 
Drunk View, you've said, Drunk View is basically you just review movies, right? Yeah, it's it's fast movie reviews, uh, you know, inspired by the uh, Red Letter Media and similar half in the bag format, except we don't have insane production values and we talk about movies while they're still in theaters. You've got your retrospectives. Yeah, my, my, my main thing currently, I guess, is, is mostly talking about video games. I like to uh, talk about video games I play. Uh, that there's not a lot to it. If if you know me from anywhere, it's the Pokemon ones, which blew up for some ungodly reason. It's just embarrassing and cool. 70k is a lot for my channel. Uh, got a lot of growth off it. I'm very happy people liked it. I'm very happy people didn't like it and told me they didn't. <laughs> um, I'm working on more Pokemon. That's, that's what the people want. I talk about video games. I kind of just say what I gotta. They tend to be a little on the long side, but I've been trying to put them less on the long side. Most of the games I play are literally just completely random, where I just put a bunch of games in a random number generator. But I did play uh, a few classics off the random ones, Pets Dogs 2. You've got a fun story about Pets Dogs 2, don't you? Yeah, we have a second channel that we don't really use for much, and no one had ripped the Pets Dogs 2 DS soundtrack. And so I, I wanted to use it for my video, so I ripped it. Which is not a big deal, it takes like 10 minutes to learn how, it's it's really easy. And I was like, well I have these, I guess like I might as well upload them to YouTube, I guess? I figured no one would care, and so I just dumped them all. And then I kind of forgot we had a second channel, like I knew it was there, but I didn't really think about it because I didn't have anything to put there and it had no subscribers. And one day I like logged into it for, I don't remember, whatever reason, just to check I guess, I don't, I don't know, I was bored. And we had shot up, uh, some of those Pets Dogs 2 soundtrack videos have a couple thousand views and they get, I get a few comments a month on them from women who are like, I played this game so much on my DS on the bus as a kid, <laughs> like that's great. Cool. Uh, what's your favorite Pets Dogs 2 uh, OST? Um... <laughs> Is it Walking the Dog? I mean, the credit song's kind of nice. I don't know. Yeah, so there's that. And then, you know, I, I, I kind of drift between making other stuff. We had the, uh, the Nostalgia Critic reviews blow up to an extent. Uh, I think that's pretty well and good shelved. We got through season 12 or 13 or something. It's kind of hard to keep up with when he makes a video a week and, you know, it, you know, it just kind of fell off it. It's hard to get back on the dog train. Uh, it is a fun video series though. So you, you do a lot of different shit. I hate to, I hate to sound like an asshole, but you're a bit of a variety channel. <laughs> Yeah, it's whatever we feel like, you know. Yeah, you, start, you started with movies, primarily. Yeah. And you kind of moved to games. You're doing your retrospectives, mm -hmm. and that's becoming the main part now. Yeah. The movie stuff still exists just as much. Exactly. And you're just compiling all of this together. And then Connor's stuff is almost entirely based on movies, too. And Connor's amazing shit posts. Yeah, he hasn't done one in a while, but the shit posts are legendary. They are great. Um, I'm really glad that the top video on our channel, for years and years and years, back back during the really early days, uh, our channel was also split 50-50, where it was movies, and then Connor would talk about comics. And uh, Connor accidentally started the whole, like, comic skate autism, I think. <laughs> because he had this video... And it was the top video on our channel for a long time called The Problem with Marvel Comics. <laughs> yeah. And he made it like right as Marvel started like doing a bunch of stupid crap. Like they made Spider-Woman pregnant and like they changed every character to be gay. Yeah. There's like a thousand characters who just became gay overnight. Yeah. And Connor made some video complaining about that like years and years ago, like towards the start of our channel, like six years ago. And that blew up to like 200,000 views and just sat at the top of our channel for ages. And, like, immediately after all these, uh, like, cringy comics gates people came up and started parroting Connor's video, like, Diversity in Comics, who's on, like, the Trevor Noah show or something. Amazing. As a stooge where they brought him on to make fun of him. So Connor, like, started that whole thing on accident. 
And for a long time, that shitty video was the top of our channel for fucking years and years until the Pokemon top 10 hottest Pokemon girls overtook it finally. Which is a joy. That video is a treat. Which uh, which ship post is your favorite? Um, because there's CIA guy. It's the Pokemon one. Po top ten hottest Pokemon <laughs> characters is, is fucking hilarious. Even the ship post started really early. Cause early on, fuck, we had a series called Click Catcher for a while, right? Which was like a Watch Mojo parody where we'd make like lists of celebrities we wanted to die next. <laughs> And, uh, um, <laughs> celebrities we wish would die, um, <laughs> top 10 cartoon characters who are gay. Uh, we did a top 10 Power Rangers where we just talked about how sexy all the Power Ranger bulges were. Uh, <laughs> and so we had, we had a few of those. And really the, the top 10 Pokemon characters is top 10 hottest Pokemon girls is just a finale for that. That came like three years later, I guess, if you... If you really trace the lineage. So you've got a bunch of, of different stuff all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it's it's whatever we feel. There's no rhyme or reason anymore. It's just insanity. There doesn't, there doesn't really need to be. I mean, it's your channel. You can do whatever. And honestly, you've been moderately successful. <laughs> kind of, yeah. We're getting there. I mean, we still have slow growth. And the Pokemon blow up and the other Pokemon blow up. The funnier Pokemon blow up. Uh, and a couple other videos, I mean, we occasionally get a video that kind of hits, even, even sometimes the drunk views get picked up. We made, like, a video on Nope, the Jordan Peele's Nope. That one's at, like, 750 now. You're, how many subs are you, you currently sitting at? Uh, 2015. 2015. God damn. We were at, like... 1700 for the longest time like low 1700 or maybe high 1600 the pokemon videos shoved us up about 400 still get i don't know seven or eight a month maybe seven or eight a month yeah during during the pokemon blow up we were getting a lot more uh Hopefully I can <laughs> recapture that to some extent with the next Pokemon video when I get that out. As soon as you... You're going to end up like Picaspri. Because you look at Picaspri's old videos, he has screenshots of his channel and it's 500 subs. Yeah. And then like a week later he had a mil. He had 100,000. insane. And he's like, now no one will ever watch my Pokemon content. And then on one of his Let's Plays he said... He was talking with his brother or whoever and he was like... Yeah, now people want to talk to me and collab with me like they're hot shit. <laughs> and I'm like, God damn, Picaspri. He blew up and he got really mean. I would be annoyed if I was in his situation to an extent too, I guess. like To blow up kind of over a week and then have all these people be like, Can't, You want to be on my channel? Collab? Yeah, like he had, he had a small, nice little thing going on and then uh, somehow he just blew up in a way he never could have expected and then he had people constantly pestering him about how they can do the same and I'm trying to leech off him or just fucking you know I guess I'd be like I, I didn't do anything I don't, I don't know that's just how these things work I guess I don't know like I can understand his annoyance to an extent mm. Mm. by the way uh, your next Pokemon video is going to shoot you up just like the Caspery <laughs> You're gonna we'll hit see. a mill in like a week. We'll see. It might. I have like five Pokemon videos coming up thanks to you, but... <laughs> Remind me to talk about Dead Rising when we get to the point of this episode. Sometime. Not too far from now, I'm gonna make a video about One Piece. Ooh. I want to see that video, because it's gonna be ten hours long. No, I don't think I would do that. The Pokemon shit's a priority right now, just because easy money. I've made a couple hundred dollars off that Pokemon video. Those and Pokemon videos. congratulations. It's always nice to see small creators blow up in a big way. And I reinvested it in the channel by buying alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the point the point of why i brought you here for this episode specifically is because the the title of this episode is creative burnout or just uh burnout and i just wanted to know how you did it yeah you've got so many different series the, <laughs> the, the one thing you're doing you got the low effort stuff like drunk view yeah but then you've also got high effort shit 
like the retrospectives. <laughs> yeah. And the Pokemon videos, which are long as shit. Yeah, too long. Uh, I have regrets, but... He, Connor's got his shit posts, which are fucking hilarious. He's got the Spider-Man retrospective, which I'm in, by the way. You should go watch that. You're also in the James Bond one. Yes. I feel like I have trouble articulating myself when it comes to movie reviews versus game reviews. Yeah, and then the Marvel thing is just an extension of his, his James Bond and... Uh, Spider-Man thing, except he's just splitting it up into more digestible parts and splitting it up over time so he doesn't spend three months working on a single video and dropping a seven-hour James Bond video. It's a very good video. I, I like it a lot, but... I'll, I'll link it. Um, for... It probably is smart to just chop it up and put it as individual segments so that you don't just block yourself off from putting anything out for three months. Well, that's that's just playing the game, really. Yeah. That too. Which kind of sucks. It, it, YouTube promotes shorter content. I don't even know if they do anymore. Long content's pretty popular right now. So how do you stop yourself from burning out at all? You just, you're <laughs> consistent. It's, it's <laughs> insulting. Um, I guess, you know, I mean, I do burn out. It's just that my burnout, I, there's so many different things going on on the channel that it's like, okay, I don't want to audio edit today. I'm not going to do my retrospective, but we have this backlog of drunk views. and Well, not, not so much drunk views, but it's like, I don't want to audio edit today, but I have Netflix roulette. So I can leave the audio editing on the retrospective and work on the Netflix roulette, which is pretty, pretty chill. So I always got like juggling so many different things that I can always shift to something else if I'm feeling worn out on one topic. I've been playing through all the Pokemon games, a lot of Pokemon, but I've also uh, taken time to just like play some short things and talk about them real briefly so I don't feel like I'm not doing stuff. I, uh... you, the way you seem to prevent burnout is jumping project to project. Yeah, I'm always juggling something. I'm always writing something. I'm always editing something. Uh, the only part, I almost never like doing voice voiceover. I think that's the hardest part for me. Because you just got to stand in front of a microphone for fucking ages. Uh, it's not even that. I just fucking, I know what my pitfalls are as when it comes to pronunciation. I make the same mistakes over and over again. I'm just like, oh, blah, 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 blah. I just make a mess. I'm like, oh, so fucking tedious. When I'm not editing, I'm probably writing something or at least doing some kind of drafting or I'm playing a game for something. I'm always thinking about it. I'm always jumping around between the different things. I always got some project that I haven't edited yet because I'm lazy. <laughs> it's so hard <laughs> to do that. I don't know. It's just how I am, I guess. You're really good at it. I just you, you deserve praise and credit because god damn yeah i mean you're the burnout king i am the burnout king <laughs> i do i get these grandiose ideas i get halfway into the project and i'm just like you release part one and then eight months later here we are <laughs> eight months later part two is started <laughs> question mark conceptualized you're gonna hate the answer to that <laughs> And since, since not many people are watching this, I feel comfortable talking about it. I am 10 minutes of recorded footage into it. That is 10 minutes in, done, finished. And then the rest, I still got to do. <laughs> so I have 40 minutes of work to do, or 40 minutes on a timeline to do. Okay. That's not awful. It's pretty bad for eight months. <laughs> for eight months, yeah. But I mean, you look at your release dates, it's <laughs> one hour ago, six days ago, two weeks ago, one month 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 ago, <laughs> two months ago. Yeah, and this has been a relatively slow time because I have so much time, so much difficulty voice acting right now. Narration, whatever, voiceover. Narration work. The, then you look at my channel. <laughs> Ten months ago. Two days ago, 11 days ago, three weeks ago, one month ago, one month ago, two months ago, two months ago, three months ago, three months ago, three months ago. That's pretty consistent for you. Yeah, but that was when <laughs> I released an album, so that's just five videos. Just Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. 
three months, four months, and let's not count the music. Five months, five months, five months, bunch of five months, six months, six months, seven months, seven months. Fucking Dead Rising was seven months ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just... You should just edit for me. <laughs> I probably should. I just have, like, this fucking steel resolve when it comes to just, you know... Uh, um, it's the, impressive. Uh, the thing is, most of my videos are edited in a day. Right. Like, like uh, uh, the, the, the Pokemon Snap video. Uh, whatever day I published it on, like, a week ago. Not even, like, six days, five days. <laughs> Uh, I wrote the scripts one day, and then my and then I sat on it because I didn't have time to record the audio, and then I recorded the audio, which ended up being eh, like eighteen minutes raw probably, and then I, uh, I like made dinner and then I came back and I was like, well, what am I gonna do with the rest of my night? And then I sat down and I, <laughs> I edited it and I uploaded it the same day. Uh, probably, the, like, the longest production time ever was on the Pokemon videos, and even those... Y you've been... Th those <laughs> take a little longer. Well, the the first... The, oh God, I'm trying to remember. Because Gold, I, I think I edited Gold over the course of three days, maybe? <laughs> that one's three hours. And then Heart Gold and Soul Silver. The only reason they're a month apart is because I hadn't finished playing Soul Silver yet. And then I finished Soul Silver, and I did Soul Silver over the course. Soul Silver took me a lot longer. Uh, to be fair, that was a very taxing video. That one probably took me five days. Knowing you <laughs> is infuriating. <laughs> it, it, it probably took me five days to do the Heart Gold and Soul Silver one. The poke, the Gold and Silver one was, I think, three days or two. Here's the thing about <laughs> Dead Rising. I had the idea in in January like of 2021, I think. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I got the gameplay footage in February and March. Just trying to get like three endings. Yeah. 18 hours. Uh, and then like six hours of grinding for the big genocider achievement. <laughs> just so I could have the five second footage of me with a mega buster. Yeah. And I would talk to you, and I said, would you like to cameo, you know, talk a bit about, like, uh, something else about Dead Rising? And then Connor was like, well, maybe talk about uh, Dawn of the Dead. But then you were like, the Wii game. Yeah. And here's the fucking thing. I had recorded the voiceover in March, first of all. Yep. And you came to me, like, a week later, and you're like, done. Yeah. Yeah, I, I played through the whole Wii game and edited it. But you know what the funny part is? The reason it took me a week is because I didn't own the game, and it took five days to come on eBay. I beat that game in like two days, had the video ready for you, and I was like, when are, when's the video coming out? <laughs> when's it coming out? <laughs> My part's already. You want me to email it to you, or what? Like, you can slap it in wherever you, you do you, dog. You did a full 22-minute video. <laughs> in a day how the fuck do you do it the, the the fucking super punch out was supposed to be a fun little break a month before i released dead rising and i didn't even get that date and i didn't even finish dead rising and then i did another you should play to tie it over the other tied over because it was taking so long yeah i don't know you just step one Head empty. Step two, no thoughts. <laughs> and you just smack your head into it really, really hard. I've, I, I have, I'm similar when it comes to editing where I kind of find it zen, but I cannot do it for more than two hours at a time. I sit down, I comb through footage for two hours, I'm like, okay, I'm done. I need a break. I yeah. need an hour away before I go back. I just have so little thought in my head that... I don't have the conceptualization to, uh, I don't, I don't have the ability to conceive of, like, putting thought into things. I just edit off instinct like a wild animal, <laughs> like a, like a dog. Your, your fucking Eternal Darkness video, I saw you edit some, and it's, it's like you go into a trance. 
Yeah, I just... I just don't... You just don't think, dog. You're thinking too much. If you don't think, you always win. How dare you be so good at this? It's, <laughs> how it's dare, not fair. How dare Gandhi be friends with Hitler, am I right? Um... <laughs> fucking whack dog you say just because there's two people on one channel it's a little easier but connor and you together are so prolific at this i mean we would be consistent even without each other but with each other it just looks insane it compiles <laughs> we go from two very quick editors to one one block of two very quick editors so that it looks just infuriating to anyone who edits like we just <laughs> it's just a deluge of stuff coming from us because we're both just pumping them out have you ever gone through burnout have you ever like spent a month away from everything a month probably not um i'd say the longest i mean the, i mean there was like a good seven months where the channel was dead in Superior when we didn't have electricity. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that stopped you <laughs> was <laughs> no electricity. The only thing that stops me is horrible poverty. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I take days off from it. There are days when I just don't play Pokemon or I don't, like, fucking edit or anything. Um, but I'd say my burnout takes place more, uh, you know, maybe two, three days at a time where I'll have worked on videos for every day for two months straight and then I'm like hmm you know I'm feeling a little worn out I'm gonna take the weekend off and then I spend the weekend drunk and I come back and I'm like you know what it's been a while since I made a three-hour video <laughs> you you got an amazing work ethic <laughs> yeah I, I guess it doesn't even feel like work though that's like the thing you enjoy this it's just like it's it's your hobby yeah well, yeah, I mean... That you can make money off of. A little bit of money. Not a lot, but a little. Enough. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it is a hobby. But it's also, I don't know, like, more than anything, it's just, like, calming, I guess, you know? Right. Just get absorbed into it for a while, do it. Get away from everything and then get back to it, you know? I mean, I do find it fun, too. There's a lot of fun, but, uh, you know, it's just kind of... It's not something that bothers me to do. It's not something I fret over. I'm just there doing it, I guess. I don't know. I think it sounds weird to say, but for me, the the whole thing was just like when I do it for me, I suck at it. I'm just awful. When I do it for other people, I'm I'm quick. I yeah. do it like that. I mean, your editing's better than mine. You're no. good at it. Get out of you here. You fancier stuff. I don't, I'm a, I'm I, a, no. I'm a workman type editor where I'm just like, I'll just roll some B-roll over this one. Cut. Paste. Cut. Paste. You know, you're doing fancy effects and I'm out here. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm not really talking about anything specific here. Time for 30 minutes of B-roll. That's, that's my break is doing the little funny edit. Yeah. Or like in the Naruto you should play, I did the substitution. That was a break from actually editing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't do anything nearly that fancy. I'll sometimes uh, edit together a funny picture in GIMP. Because I'm too lazy to play it. <laughs> so I use GIMP. It's, it's insane. It's, it's you're, You are the, the effective... No nonsense I'm editor. Just a simple workman editor doing simple workman things. I, I try my best to, to be a little fancier with things, but I I try to also be like the 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 workman thing and I suck at it. But then Connor's like, hey, do you want to be in the Spider-Man video? Or maybe I I I think I might have elbowed myself in. I was like, can I talk about Spider-Verse? But I did that in like two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what, what's going on there? I don't know. Maybe you should be making videos about movies, apparently. Maybe I should just... Uh, <laughs> maybe I should just edit other people's shit as a break from editing my shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't care for perfectionism or anything like that. 
I just kind of roll with what I got. Before we move on, the example I was going to say is uh, the Nostalgia Critic Season 5 that I edited. <laughs> that yeah, was a you break. Yeah, you edited like three days. What the fuck? It makes no sense. I mean, I, I kind of understand like the perspective on it, you know? Where it's like, if I'm slow on this, I'm letting other people down. Right. And if I'm just doing it for myself, who cares, you know? Exactly. And it, it's more like, uh, well, I promised... I would do something. I would give them a video. So here it is. Whereas if it's for myself, I can explain away. I can be like, eh, just take a week off. Eh, take two months off. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. I don't even know if, if, if I had like the monetization, I don't even know if that would be enough motivation for me. <laughs> like a little bit of money on the side. Eh. I mean, it's not a lot of money. Not, not even. I mean, what? The, the Pokemon videos together have... 100k views I've made 700 off them which is not bad at all like $700 is $700 but I can cut that if you want by the way no I don't care okay you know $700 for 100k views you know that that's enough for all of this yeah I mean it's definitely good money and it's it's basically just like passive income at this point where even though the video is pretty substantially slowed down, I still make 10 or 15 bucks off in a month, which is like, you know, whatever, I'll take it. Right. Um, but at the same time, you have to be, like, substantially... Like, even once you hit the monetization barrier that they have, whatever that is now, you need, like, a certain amount of watch time and a thousand subscribers and whatever else. <laughs> when you first cross over that, uh, that threshold, you're not making anything. You're making... You know, when you first cross over a thousand subscribers, you're going to be making five dollars a year, ten dollars a year, maybe. <laughs> and, and that's if you didn't just blow up off of one video and die immediately after, where you'll just be making nothing again. The hope, and I think we've discussed this way in the past, the hope is that someone finds your channel and they're like, Oh, I love this, I love everything, I'm gonna watch everything. That's where you want to make your money from. And mm -hmm. if you can get like a few like 50,000 people to do that, yeah. you'd be rolling in it. Yeah, I mean, look at uh, Red Letter Media only has half a million subscribers. Right. But all of their videos get watched half a million times. Exactly. And that's better than someone who has a million who gets uh, spotty views where they're bouncing between 10k and... 100k you know okay so another thing i wanted to talk about is how obvious it is to spot the burnout kings in youtube <laughs> uh i think you hide it pretty well Let, let's name a few oh oh are we calling people out matthew mitosis I don't even know if he's a burnout king. I don't know what he does. He he released w one video this year. I don't even year. know if you can call that burnout though. He just disappears for literal years. That's not burnout. I don't I'm not going to keep this that's probably, just, but but that's just going away. That's that's Papa went to the store to get cigarettes. <laughs> Joseph Anderson. I don't know if it's burnout. I think it's when Witcher one came out, and then Witcher two came out, and like two months after that, it's been like a year and a half. Yeah, but Witcher three is the biggest one. I know it's the biggest and one. And he but read he all did of Witcher two in two months. He read all the books. Yeah, but he did that before he did Witcher one and two. I mean, he probably does have some. <laughs> I wouldn't blame him. Those are big videos, even by my standards. Here's how I put it. There are type A YouTubers and type B YouTubers. There's no in-between. Type autism and type... Bl <laughs> Baloney. Baloney. Type A YouTubers upload so consistently it's shocking. That's you. Type B YouTubers are spotty. That's me. But you can you can spot them pretty easily. I mean, Running Shine for one. <laughs> Running Shine. I don't even know if he gets burnout. He's just slow. He's that, a slow ass man. He, he talks on his streams. Yeah. Where he's like, yeah, I edit every single day, and he's like, yeah, I edited three hours today. I got four minutes. It's like, all right, see you in a year, bud. Keep at it. He he wanted to, he wanted to get the Ocarina of Time video out in August of that year. 
and it didn't come out till March. He was pretty close, but yeah, he, he was he, just slow. the The way to tackle it, the classic boomer method, is do one minute a day every day, and you'll eventually be done in a month, or two months, or a year. Maybe Joseph Anderson is doing one minute. <laughs> And we'll get to see the Witcher video in like 350 years. What if? <laughs> what if Witcher 3 comes out and it's literally 50 hours? Would you would you eat your hat? I mean, if we're going off the time scale established in the first and second videos, we're probably gonna have like an 18 hour video. I'm I'm excited. I am too. I can't um, wait. Yeah, there's there's definitely some burnouts in my subscription there are people i haven't seen in years i don't i don't think <laughs> it's it's about work ethic i don't think it's about luck i think it's just there's people that there's people that can do and there's people that think they can do but are kind of lazy about it yeah there are people who just there's people i'm subscribed to have been uploaded in a year and i think they're still doing things they just don't upload <laughs> like Matthew my toast is the one I'm surprised by the most is Nitro Rad I don't know how he does it he's consistent as hell he uploads once uh, once a month usually oh yeah I like Nitro Rad um, I was thinking of that other guy I yeah. fucking hate Alpha Rad he's yeah I was thinking of that guy that guy sucks that guy. I like Nitro Rad Alpha Rad sucks he's so mimi for real for real no cap let's see <laughs> Yeah, there's, like, if I just scroll through my subscriptions, there's a bunch of people who just haven't uploaded in ages. Uh, maybe, and they will, they just, they just don't right now. Here's what you gotta do. You specifically should do this. You should go to cons and find these people, <laughs> these YouTubers, and be like, I can edit for you. Find Lingara. <laughs> I can edit for you super fast. I'll um, edit for you, Lingara. I will get Ocarina of Time, one hour, out, today. I should become Linkar's editor and then edit in a bunch of <laughs> stealthy Lightbringer memes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I, honestly, I think it just boils down to people, and that's okay. I mean, I'm, I'm fine being the type B, and I'm fine with you being type A. It's when you combine these powers, you get the best channels. Yeah. I just need to... Okay, I have a plan. Okay. I have a plan. This is big brain. Big brain. Your Dead Rising video uh -huh. is a part of my Dead Rising video. Oh no. And now you're slowing me down. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to finish it. I'll think about it. I'll see you in three days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, by the way. When you released the Netflix roulette and I remembered the joke you said where it's like, the Dead Rising will be out in three days, I was like, what if I did? What if I did? If you did, I would have screamed. <laughs> like, no, not part two. Five hour finale. Part two. <laughs> oh Christ, how many parts is it supposed to be? The script is 90 pages. I got <laughs> through 20 pages in part one. <laughs> I'm gonna trim the shit out of it as I record it, but yeah, yeah. This, that's a lot. that that's a big brain move. Let, let's go, let's go. Oh, uh, let's see. I also always come up with like weird experimental ideas I want to do. What what kind yeah. of videos have you got in your your brain right now, tumbling around? <laughs> I'm all Pokemon right now, uh, for better or for worse. Uh, the One Piece thing. I want the One Piece one to be short. I don't really want to talk about everything in one piece because I think it's better if you just go at it yourself. Um, partially, partially it's a warning against the anime. <laughs> um, but also there's a lot of things I admire about it. Manga is a really cool uh, art form to me. Mm -hmm. Since for the most part it's written and drawn and just the brainchild of one person. Right. Which is not the case in basically any other industry. I'm talking movies, comic yeah. books. You know, movies are this big collaborative effort between a, a thousand people. Yeah. Uh, video games are the same way. Um, even, like, American comic books usually have different writers and artists, and they have, like, writing teams. And now, like, the, the mainline comics from Marvel and DC all have these 
big editor continuity teams that oversee everything. And so pretty much the only two, like, formats where it's just, like, one person's vision all the way through is, like, books, manga. Uh, and do, do I think there's something that. admirable about that. Yeah. I mean, Berserk never got finished by the creator, <laughs> but it was their vision. Yeah. Start to, start to semi-finish. <laughs> start to three-fourths. Oof. That's, that's the one thing. They're a type B manga artist. <laughs> yes, there are. Yes, there are. And then... Hunter can... Cross Hunter hasn't had a chapter in five years. <laughs> Fuck. It's coming back, apparently. We're gonna get three more chapters in another five-year hiatus. But then you get One Piece, and they've been fairly consistent. I mean, it's shonen. It kind of has fairly to be. Fairly consistent is an understatement, dude. They're shonen. They have to be consistent. One Piece takes, like, eight weeks off a year. Fucking Christ. He takes usually... Well, it's increased, but at the start there was no breaks. Now... There's maybe a break every month or every two months, so it's probably like eight to ten weeks a year off. Still, that's that's hella impressive. That's still incredibly consistent for a manga that's been running for 25 straight years and is on chapter <laughs> 1,050. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty impressive. I think you're right. Uh, manga and books are really the only way a singular artist can explain their vision in a format that's easily digestible by a viewer. Yeah. Because I'm trying to put an animation together right now, but I'm the writer-producer. Then we've got the creator doing his thing. He's also producing. Uh, and the character artist, designer, concept artist. We've the got... Animation team and... The animator himself. Voice actors. We've got fucking five voice actors. Plus mm -hmm. me and the creator doing the voices for cameo characters. Mm -hmm. All of this is to say that at one point this was a clear vision, but now it's it's a little bit of everyone's vision. Yeah. 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 That's, that's another... Yeah. So that's why One Piece has been on my mind. Also, with the conclusion of the latest arc, we've finished a storyline that's been running continuously since... I mean, this this specific segment and the collection of things in it started in 2010, 11 maybe? <laughs> and one storyline for 10 years that's finally wrapped up for the most part. Uh, so it's kind of an exciting point to uh, be into it, I guess. So that's cool too. Oh, uh, uh, let's see. I always have a few shitpost ideas. I don't... I'm other not other ideas. Mind. I'm not as good at making them as Connor, truthfully. Connor, like, Connor is amazing at them. Uh, you know, for for some of them, I like collaborate with Connor and I'll give him ideas and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the shit posts are kind of hard to make. <laughs> like, there's there's some something about the way Connor narrates those videos that makes them even funnier that I cannot match. This is the part where the Joker becomes the villain. <laughs> <laughs> when he starts doing the the shitty Pokedex voice, he's like, "Our back the butt plug Pokemon." It's really funny. Um, he he's a <clears throat> secret genius at shit posting. Completely straight faced, saying Misty has buffalo chicken colored hair. No giggling. I wouldn't be able to make it through that line. It'd take me hundreds of hours. <laughs> oh shit! I do have some ideas for some. Some of those will probably see the light of day eventually. No, no, I want to make a video about Super Monkey Ball. Super Monkey Ball? Oh, I would, Junior. I would love to be in that video. <laughs> I love Super Monkey Ball. That was one of my backups. Uh, okay, I'll play Super Monkey Ball and Super Monkey Ball 2. You play Junior. What's, is that the GBA? Yeah, you, you get to play that one. You can play the DS one too if you want. I'll play the GBA one. That sounds easy. It's a horrible game. Well, okay. it's not horrible. It's pretty good, but... I'll play Adventure. It's very difficult. Play... You get to play touch and roll on the DS. <laughs> We're the only... Yeah. Movement. Touch and roll is actually kind of fun, but... Uh -huh. It's fucky. It's weird. Gaming content has been a lot of fun to make. It's always fun to talk about your favorite games and recommend them to other people. <laughs> I like to talk about games no one's ever heard of. That's the, that's the thing. I make 13 view videos on... <laughs> Space Hawk. For the Intellivision. Space Hawk, and then... <laughs> 
<laughs> then you make 40 minute videos on Pac-Man. I like that Pac-Man one. The, pa the format of the Pac-Man one's fun. I still gotta watch it. It's, um, yeah. I mean, I... I didn't have a lot to say about Pac-Man, so I just talk about every version of Pac-Man. And so each segment is just like a five minute look at how Pac-Man evolved through the years in roughly chronological order. And uh, I like that format. That's what I'm gonna try to do again. Um, one I was thinking of that's kind of weird um, would probably be doing like the same for Space Invaders. Cause Space Invaders has been around since the literal dawn of video games. And despite that, like, it, it keeps coming back in different ways. Mm -hmm. Where, like, the PS1 had two different Space Invaders games. Yeah. One made by Activision, one actually made by Taito. All the different versions of this unchanging monolith of video games from the dawn of time. Which is also basically what Pac-Man was. Yeah, I was gonna say, a lot of the early arcade games were built off of the concept of, like, a, one really tiny gameplay loop that was just done really well. Pac-Man <laughs> was collect shit and avoid shit. Yeah. Um, Space Invaders was shoot shit and not get shot by yeah. shit. Um, and then you get stuff like uh, Frogger, where it's just like cross a road without getting hit. Yep. You get stuff like uh, Galaga, where it's just more shoot shit. The ones people remember from the time are simple and easy to understand. Mm-hmm. Fast paced and addictive. Yes. Pac Man works because it's fast paced and addictive. You you push yourself a little further every time, you say, damn, this time I can get a little further. And they made it better in, in what, Championship Edition, where they made it even faster. Yeah. And then you have stuff like, you know, Miss Pac Man put a twist on it by putting in, uh, uh, like, cycling through four different maps. So you, you get a little bit of variety in there. And then stuff like Galaga mm -hmm. has the same kind of thing going on, where it's like fast-paced, it's quick. You've got puzzle games, especially like Tetris, mm -hmm. which Poyo te Poyo. Tetris and Poyo Poyo are infinitely addicting, replayable yeah. experiences. And the best part about all these old games like Pac-Man, Tetris, and Poyo Poyo is that, especially now, you can just rev them up on an emulator, play for five minutes while you're between things, and then go back to whatever you're doing. Yeah. There's no saving or fumbling around with menus and loading. It loads up in two seconds. You play a game for five minutes, and then you say, all right, cool, back to work. That's that's kind of the, the gameplay loop that was prevalent in arcades and continued in arcades for the longest time. Shit like Crazy Taxi... Uh, a lot of Dreamcast games, which were, what, kind of emulating the arcade style. Not even emulating, dog. The, uh, the Dreamcast is more or less, basically, they figured out how to make the arcade boards that they'd been using in their machines small enough to fit in a console. So they did. It's, it's basically an arcade machine crushed into a little box with some original software on top. I think gaming content's a lot easier to make. Uh, in some regards, but just recommending shit is always fun, and then talking about mechanics is always fun. I, th I think, uh, yeah, arcadey games are my favorite. What kind of games are your favorite? Do you like story rich? Do you like uh, RPGs? <laughs> um, I'm all over. Like, I'm I'm down for whatever. I like RPGs. I like uh, I like actiony things. I like uh, uh, 2D actiony stuff, especially stuff like Castlevania Contra. I really like. Um, I could never get into Contra. All sorts of all sorts of 3D action games too, though, and not just action games. But like slower things. Pretty much, I, I draw the line at <laughs> most visual novels. Not gonna happen. Um, <laughs> uh, very few visual novels manage to keep my attention. I'm trying. And also text-heavy, really, really story-heavy RPGs great on me like pokemon sun and moon i've never finished mm. only pokemon game i haven't because it's just endless walls of horribly written dialogue you're not missing much i know i'm not my my side game right now between the pokemon shit is little big adventure yeah it's a 90s point and click adventure game which is a genre i have almost no experience with any other big uh reviews you're excited <laughs> for um I don't know. 
Uh, I, I have picked out a number of games at random, which is always kind of funny to like look ahead and be like, what am I doing next? Right. And, uh, you know, um, I, I like... I like to especially think like the stinkers I roll. Like, whenever I get this Pokemon shit done, in a couple games I have Skylanders Trap Team. <laughs> I don't know what a Skylanders is. I'm like a hundred. You own that? Yeah. I also had a thought once of doing like <laughs> doing just reviewing porn like it was a real movie. I don't like. There's no way I could get away with it. Is the problem? Even if I just went through. And drew like stick figures depicting what I'm talking about. One, you wouldn't have any idea what was going on. Two, it would probably still get flagged and get my channel taken down. I think like a just like earnestly discussing porn like it was a real movie would be really funny though. I had an idea a while back and I was gonna try and do it for this year, but I didn't get around to it. I was going to do an April Fool's joke where I just do a porn game. Yeah. At a you should play <laughs> format. <laughs> And the, my workaround was going to be just upload it to the hub and then just put a, <laughs> like a mirror link on YouTube. Be like, oh, haha, April Fool's no real video. And then in the descriptions, the link. <laughs> Connor was actually going to review. <laughs> Did he tell you about that? No, what? Uh, Connor, Connor does like Blu-ray collecting now. And he uh, found this label that just prints weird fucking shit. Yeah. And they printed this feature length porn <laughs> called like the Angry Goblin or something. I don't remember what it's called. And it's about a midget who kidnaps and rapes women. He made he made like the script for a video and then he's like, there's no way I can release this. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember you told me about this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't remember what, it, what the movie's called. It's like a weird, like, feature-length midget porn with, like, a story where, like, the midget is the villain. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, he, he was gonna do a review on that. <laughs> it's just kind of, like, a difficult thing to pull off yeah, for a number of reasons. Didn't he put porn in his Han Solo review? Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about? We've talked about the channel, burnout, games, videos, editing. What do you use to edit? Pirated Vegas 13, baby. You can just get it on the Humble Bundle for like legally for like 20 bucks. I don't, I don't like the new versions of Vegas. 17 kind of sucks, but yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't like large format videos, so when Back I do when I, Dead to Rising, when I edit it, it crashes every five minutes. Back when I started the channel, I was like, how am I going to edit videos? And I googled, what's a good way to edit videos? And I was like, I, I, you know, I tried them all out, or I looked at them. I was like, Vegas looks good. So I pirated Vegas 13, and I've been using that same copy of pirated Vegas 13 for six years. Hasn't let me down. I record my audio on Audacity. <laughs> because I don't know what else to do. The following admittance of breaking the law is a joke. Yeah, it's parody. That was... Covered under parody and fair use. And not um, at all incriminating. Yeah, my favorite part about when you, when you crack Vegas... Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that Vegas asks you for, like, your licensor name. Yeah. And when you crack it, you can put in any name. So every time I boot up a uh, Vegas 13, it shows the licensor name briefly. It's like, <laughs> this copy belongs to Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like 420 Avenue. I don't remember. I just put some stupid crap. Uh, let's see. What else do I use? That's pretty much it. It's pretty much Vegas and Audacity. What Do you do and anything? Camp. Do you, um... <laughs> Gimp, because I'm too lazy to pirate Photoshop. Here's a fun thing that you can do that'll make you sound better. Pirate After Effects. No, but add equalization to your vocals. Just bump the highs and drop the lows. And that's it. And that's it. It's a preset in Vegas. It takes two seconds. I don't know how to do that. Oh my god. I've figured out everything on my own. Actually, I think the only, the only thing I ever looked up how to do was make things slow motion. Just hold control. Yeah, I know that now. Is that fucking not the craziest shit? Yeah, it's really simple. I couldn't find it. I was like, how do I do this? 
I think that's like the only thing I ever looked up. Everything else I just kind of taught myself and every once in a while I'll accidentally stumble into something new and I'll be like, huh, it's neat. Also just uh, add some DSing, add some equalization, add uh, uh, a fucking, it already has the noise floor um, added. You just have to initiate it. You have to toggle it from infinity to like negative 48 decibels and that'll take out the in the background. Do you wanna do you wanna plug your channel at all? NTMA Productions. Um, now on YouTube, you can just put at NTMA Productions, and it'll have a nice link, and it looks really nice. Really? Yeah, you can even put it in titles, and people can click on it from the title. It's really oh. convenient. Um, that's that's cool. Yeah, I'm Aiden. I'm half of that team. I'm sure Connor will be on the podcast in eventuality. Talk about his side of. Shit. Um, yeah, I mean, follow. I make video game stuff, movie stuff, shit posts, watch the watch the top 10 hottest Pokemon characters. Um, you know, Grant's in all my videos. Yeah. You'll he... probably see Grant more often on my channel than on his. <laughs> I like to call those my hidden videos. Hidden to my viewers. No one checks my guest starring playlist. Me and Connor have a guest starring playlist too. We've shown up in the oddest places. That's where I got your the idea from. Because we were we were on the Willie Mac show and he's fairly popular. Right. Because he made fun of Connor's ironic Star Wars movie. He's like, let's get some death sticks, Jar Jar. And then we had the beef with Total Drama Ricky, <laughs> which was a wild saga. I'll let Connor tell that one maybe. <laughs> the Total Drama Ricky beef. Yeah, I think that about covers it. Yeah, that's it for me, dog. All right, well, this we gotta go get another shiny. This this has been content contempt. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, but consider the following. Uh huh. Good point. Anything else? I still haven't used my racial slurs. <laughs> <laughs>